I'm in Toronto, and I'd like to know why is it that we're so close to this powerful, powerful nation spread it all across this border, and we're not American? That's what I want to know. Kingston, Ontario, situated on the shores of Lake Ontario, and we are standing way up on this hill here at Old Fort Henry. On good days, it looks like this. Yeah. We're going to focus on a very exciting period of history in Canada, which was the War of 1812. This what? war, the one the Americans forget about. That's right, the one the Americans forget about. During the War of 1812, the people, maybe dressed in hats quite like these, kept the pesky Americans out of this part of the country. It might be like we're going to make history come alive! Great expense. In Toronto this time, as we do the War of 1812 for you in two minutes. The Americans always have been good at this marching around with flag stuff. The Americans always been able to do this better than just about anybody else. for the Canadian side. Well, there seems to be an awful lot of Americans, which is a problem that uh, I don't think we anticipate. We're very proud of being Canadians. That uh, it's great to remind Americans that uh, we won the War of 1812, right? Yes, we did win the War of 1812. The Americans set the out. TV yeah, back. that's right. Yeah, the Americans set out to conquer British North America. By the end of the war, the border had not changed, so the British, Canadian, and Native forces successfully defended the border. Yeah. Now, and any territory we did gain, we gave back. Yes, both sides. You're welcome. <laughs> Seems the Americans now are going to get the uh, the subway, but there is, of course, the carnage, the waste, the inhumanity of war, which we should never ever forget. Hey, Mike, I would like to know who discovered Canada. This uh, windy little spot is Lanz O Meadows, which is at the uh, top of the Great Northern Peninsula in Newfoundland. And for those of you laboring under the false assumption that this country was discovered by a Cabot or a Carche, you would be 100% incorrect. Columbus not even talking about No, we're not even talking about that wanker. Leif Erikson, go over here. Leif Erikson set out the first European settlement in North America right here on this spot, and we're standing on it. I am over rapid. <laughs> <laughs> Over a thousand years ago, this was a Viking settlement and it's been kept preserved. That's the actual foundations of the towns or the buildings. If you look over there, you can see the uh, recreation type thing. But past the chef. <laughs> that is not a Viking chef, it's a fjord. <laughs> okay, Mike, I always wondered what are hoodoos? Who do is be a term heller? Excellent Canadian geographical land formation. Again, lesson, this this is uh, what they call hoodoos. You know, you've always heard about them, hoodoos. You see the, the, the like the vertical sections of rock there. The dark part at the bottom uh, used to be the bed of an ancient sea some 78 million years ago. And up above, uh, is, uh, like sandstone, the lighter colored stuff, is sort of uh, like silt that uh, the rivers and streams, uh, after the sea dried up, deposited. And I think the, the top part, the cap, is some sort of really super hard sandstone or limestone or something like that. And it's kept the elements from the columns so they haven't worn away. But anyway, that is a, is a, is a famous hoodoo. Oh, See those things leaning up, scooping high into the sky. Veritable geographical marvels. These are little sticks of sand crap in the middle of nowhere, and it's raining. Who was the clown that took this picture? They're, They're sitting on that rock like that. 
Well, sure it does. All you have to do is get down. You just get down a little ways. You get down and you and you look up. These people get sold down the river. There's this giant thing. The postcard guys, or these pamphlet guys. I'm going to his house. Oh, Mr. Get that guy's name. Oh. I'm Sorry, everyone. Sorry, Sorry, everyone. Mike Rhodes has been disappointed by nature again. My favorite thing in the whole country. The guy could ask any question he wanted to about this great land artist. Look. And he goes, I like this. Well, who do? Just relax. Who do? Relax. 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 It's called Canada Any Questions. It's our job to answer the questions. Well, you ask. It's not our job to editorialize about, about the question itself. Well, you could ask about, like, actual things. The country is littered with them. Littered with stuff. You have some really good stuff. There's about wow, 17 right. trillion really, really, really good things wow, right. that you can see in this country. Flower pots. flower pots. The flower pots are excellent. They're great. They should just go see those or something like that or the glacier or what? Jeez. Where you go? Whew. These are the rocks. These are the rocks. Finally, uh, not not some rocks. The rocks. Not a whack of rocks. These are the rocks. The rocks. And this would be the rocks provincial park in New Brunswick. <clears throat> And finally, you know, we get to see something in New Brunswick that's, that's sort of claimed as a natural wonder that doesn't sort of leave me wondering. They call it a natural wonder. This is pretty cool. You want to tell me uh, what it be? These are old. Good, good start. It's been quite a while. <clears throat> this is um, the glacier swept over here. Millions and millions of years. 30 million, I think. But then I have another 30 in here. 30, for 30 clicks back, they swept all this material, the gravel, the sand, and settled here on these flat spots on the beach. And after millions and millions of years, they crushed down and made themselves very, very hard. Yes. Rock-like in their rockness yeah. would be a good description. Right. Of very rock-like. In typical fashion, these things are known in the tourist guides as the, as the, as the world's largest flower pots, which I think is sort of undignified, you know. I mean, because they have stuff growing on the top of them, I guess these things, if you're, if you're really twisted, I guess they sort of resemble clay flower pots. So. Well, the ones I used to make. It's hard to believe that there'd be two giant world-class natural phenomenon in one city, probably within miles of each other, just a few miles apart. And here, fabulous, the incredible tidal bar, where this ocean comes crashing backwards over the Petakodiak River. Is it flows to the ocean, right? That's what's supposed to happen. The tide comes back in this area where the highest tides in the world are, comes hurtling up and it reverses the direction of the river in an incredible spasm of natural incredibleness. You know, well, I don't want you to get too excited about it because as the sign says, the highest tides are in the spring and in the fall and we're getting pretty close to summer, summer here. So I think, um, it so may we'll not be quite as majestic. majestic. Okay, we'll go down to awesome. It'll probably only be awesome. It'll be awesome, okay. Says monkey face rock. Monkey face mountain rock. Monkey face mountain rock. So what do you think? Is that monkey or what? Do you think? Can you see the sort this of sloping head and the brows? Yeah. This is what the local people call it. It looks. It takes a minute, but it's there. The town may not call it that, but we call it that. These aren't pot plants growing here, are they, by any chance? See up there, this is this is Breakfast Mountain. When the settlers and stuff came paddling up their little world boats and stuff up there, they stopped here for breakfast. Okay? Uh -huh, okay? And it was discovered a long, long time ago that there is treasure in the Madar Hills. See, if you look up there, there's a little face of a guy. Now that, that head there, which I squished, where? And way up in the middle of the mountain. He's looking down over the Humber River to protect the buried treasure from pirates. What little man? And I am so excellent. The little man right in the middle there. Can you see it right there? Check this out. You got a photo here. 
See? Brackness Mountain, just outside of Cornerbrook, Newfoundland, is the place where Mike and Mike become the fabulously rich and excellent Mike and Mike. So we'll only do shows from our yacht from now on. I don't see any face in that. That looks like a, from our helicopter. That looks like a cat. So much money. That's Diamonds, a, that's jewels. A, that's a cat. The, right the man and the mouth look down all over our fortune. He's going, Mark and Mark, come and get your fortune. Well, this is exciting, isn't it, kids? This is a little puddle jumper. The reason we're here is because right over there, it's a little cloudy today, it's unfortunate, but right over there, you can just sort of make out the, the range, but there's, uh, there's a glacier there, and you don't find that in every city. And it's really interesting, there's, a, there's an excellent story that goes with it. The Indians, uh, the Haidas used to come down and raid villages, kill a man, steal the women, and, uh, which, you know, warring tribes are wont to do. And this one particular raid, they sent all the women and children up on the glacier to be safe before they went in the raid. When they came back from the raid, all they found was red snow. The women and children were gone. And since that day, it's been referred to as a forbidden plateau. And even now, the Indians will not go up there. So again, you know, it's really too bad. It's a spectacular looking thing. And that's, that's, why, uh, that's why I brought you. Imagine people can ski on it and stuff. And as it carves its way through, reforming this giant, yielding, but firm land. I suppose uh, something like wipe that. that with stupid grin off your face? It's not my fault, it's cloudy, it's there. I mean, it's a landmark of the area. That's what it's known for. This is the Comox Valley. They call it the Comox Glacier, but it's it's generally known as Forbidden Plateau. Cho Tony, Tony, get back here! I'm not kidding. There's a glacier, and it's right over there. Now, if this is glacier even is, is half as big as Campbell says, you think they'd measure it somewhere? What we do have is the largest log cabin in the world, and world's finest salmon fishing. You think somewhere in there? Whatever kind of That's bogus thing. information you're trying to give people because I have now got the proof. And if you'll notice, I got like a whack of stuff right here from uh, the tourist information people and it's quite obvious to anybody with a brain that there is a glacier here. Plus other stuff too. But look, it's a glacier. There, that's like not really a great shot. At this one, there's an, even artist renditions of it, which you don't find for just anything. Yeah, uh, you know, that artist rendition again, comes out of know, imagination that is too. That glacier. I want Tony to see this. No. Yeah. So like if the lapel pin from the town is like the glacier, it's obviously a big deal, right? So where do you think so they took that picture from? Oh, come yeah. on. I believe you. Oh, no, you don't believe me. I believe you. You're my friend. Oh, my gosh. Where did you feel it? We were just outside a car cross in the Yukon, and we just drove by and just said, wow. Look yeah, this is there. this is car cross. This is this is affectionately known as the world's smallest desert. And of course, this used to be a glacial lake at one point, but as the water levels got lower and lower and lower, what you've got left is kind of like the sandy lake bottom. And then you've got the prevailing winds off Lake Bennett, which constantly work the soil and really makes it difficult for any kind of trees to grow here. Yeah, well, what? Let's just look at it. Why don't you enjoy it? I am enjoying it. There's no reason we can't educate at the same time as having fun. <laughs> you have to put up with going around towards the turn corner and then you have to get throw this in your face this big whack of gorgiosity isn't it beautiful this is everyone lake it's gorgeous well you know why the water's that color don't you oh because god in his magic power paint no actually it's actually it's a combination of blue and green light waves mike reflecting up from the bottom and the bottom, of course, is composed of marl. Marl being clay and decomposed shell fragments and stuff. And you get that color, and it's usually found in freshwater lakes, like this one that have low oxygen levels during the summer. Why don't you shut your yap for a second and just look at it?
Jesus. Palm trees in Canada. Palm trees right here in Nanaimo. Pretty amazing, huh? Don't see that every day, do you? No, you don't see that every day. Great. Magnetic Hill, Moncton, New Brunswick. Proceed yeah. to sign ahead for natural phenomena. We read the sign carefully. Okay. Pull over to left. Pull over to left lane, place engine in neutral. That's, That's right. Release brakes, coast uphill backwards. See water run uphill. Now neutralize yourself. Right? Neutral. Okay. We're going up a hill. Don't look back. Don't look, back. look back. Don't look back. And now, doesn't it look as if Let you're going uphill? Up doesn't it look like you're going, going up here? Yeah. So no! I should have known we needed a local in the car to do it properly well, yeah, because we were completely it, confused this, the last time. It used to work a lot better in the 50s and cars had more metal and, and chrome because of the magnetic effect and everything. But hey, isn't it working? Isn't this amazing? Why do you think a million cars come here every year? Obviously, this is Bridgetown, Nova Scotia. And according to my Evangeline Trail guide, Bridgetown is, and I quote, the prettiest little town in Nova Scotia. And oh, that's agree with just, that oh, sure. That's just safe tourist propaganda. That, that's what they want to tell the tourists who can't handle it. But you out there can handle it. We've found and we've gone deep. It is also home of the secret magnetic hill. Research the secret magnetic hill. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and he's going to tell us. That's secret. Yeah. <laughs> from, from the Tourist Bureau, you go into town. Your first left is uh, Church Street. Follow that up the mountain, past uh, Provincial Park, and at the Arlington Road, you make a U-turn. From there, you uh, count back six telephone poles. Okay, so you go right through this post here, the red, the red thing. Put your shift in neutral. The car will be drawn backwards up the hill. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. What do we think? Are you wearing the other one? Is it as uh... I think it's as good as Moncton, easily. And you go way faster here. Yeah. We're here at this, this place in Saskatchewan that I've been telling Mike about for quite some time. And it's a place that even people in Regina, for that matter, don't even know exists. It's called the, the uh, lake is called Little Manitou Lake, and you might say, well, big deal, it's a lake uh, in Saskatchewan, but that's not, that's lake not the whole point. I mean, first, yeah, that's weird, but first, but, but it's, it's salty, this lake. I thought it'd be enough just to bring him here and show, show him the salt fluff and that kind of stuff, but no. No, apparently we're going in the lake. That's why all these other people are doing it. That's why, <laughs> that's why the beach is so packed out with people. and the tide will come back in and the same rapid effect will appear the other way. So what, where's the, the ocean's down this way? Right, right around that corner. Right? Okay, what, what is this, like a river? St. John River. It's a river. That's how it is, fresh water, salt water mix. Right. Okay. Making brackish water. All this turbulence is caused by the undercurrents. The tide is going out so like the water is running on the surface out but the underneath currents are still coming in, and that's what gives it the rapid effects. The cross and the two tides. That's what makes all the nice, nice whirly pools here. Can you go like uh, take uh, inner tubes and stuff and put the ride on this? Or? I would not recommend it. No, it's uh, not really used for recreation. Uh, the uh, tides can uh, pull your right under if you were to go over, and it might even pull a raft under. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to try it. No, I wouldn't recommend it. The birds. When we come to a place, we usually get you know, like an expert guide, you know, who's just you let in with anybody else takes, but tell us about it. I don't know, I've never been here. I've never been before. <laughs> I 
give this, but I'm not handing them out. I give this a wonder of the world. And another thing that as Canadians we can be very proud of is that our falls, the horse is infinitely cool than the American, American Falls. The American Falls are like a cataract. They, they try to like, once again, just sort of snuggling up against us again. Yeah. Yeah. We the got American Falls, but it's a waterfall. But this is an awesome. This is a falls. Quebec is Chute Montmorency. Yeah. The falls. The falls. The falls Montmorency. You, you know they're much higher than Niagara Falls. No way. Yes, way. Yeah. Oh, they're no. 30 meter higher than Niagara Falls. They look smaller, maybe. No, they're not. Yes, they are. 30 meters. That's like 100 feet. Yeah. 30 meters higher than Niagara. Yeah, but not as as wide. But they're really higher. One time and a half higher. No. No, not that much. <laughs> so famous and higher, how come there aren't tacky hotels and rides and gift shops and stuff around here? Well, they're building it right, right here. Oh,